Harshan Agus Falcharev Tudasila Gus Speak Gaelic. Welcome to Speak Gaelic. In this episode, we'll be using some of the language we've looked at previously to allow us to describe someone's appearance. From eyes to hair, we'll learn to talk about all of our best features. And I have a lovely Gaelic saying for you that's related to that. Literally, as alike as two herring. As usual, some Gaelic phrases can get a bit lost in translation, but you've probably guessed that it has a similar meaning to like two peas in a pod. It's often used to describe people who have a strong family resemblance. So you could say, my brother and I are hakolach ridaskathan. You'll find lots of phrases like that one, as well as more information about all of the language topics we've covered, including today's, online. So make sure you make good use of it. But before you go and do that, let's see what's ahead of us. Useful words and phrases to describe people. Hi Art. I guess hi cool. Callum McLean goes in search of an age-old cure. How to talk about the languages you speak. A Frankish akum, sir. A Bjorla akum. I guess, well, a Bikin Gaelic akum. And we'll meet inspirational Gaelic learner Colin Scott McKenzie from the Isle of Lewis. A Vilshiv Jishal. Are you ready? Maha, noch toshishin. Let's speak Gaelic. <laughs> to ask what someone looks like, we say, Kurish a hai kawach. What does he look like? Kurish a hai kawach. Or, if you're asking what she looks like, Kurish a hai kawach. What does she look like? Kurish a hai kawach. And the response to that, Hi, he is. Hi, or hi, she is. Hi, followed by the description. There are many words to describe people, and I'll share a few here. Arsh, tall. Arsh, cool, slim. Cool and shin, old, shin. So if I were to ask, Kurish a hai kawach, what's she like? You could answer by saying, hai arsht agus kuv, she's tall and slim. Hai arsht agus kuv. Or if I'm asking about a male, hai arsht agus kuv. He's tall and slim. Hi, Arsh, I guess cool. Now, one of the main ways in which we recognise people is by the colour of their hair. The Gaelic for hair is falp. Falp. To describe someone's hair, you say that the colour of their hair is on them. You use eith for on him. Eith and ore for on her, ore, eir and ore. To describe his hair colour, it's ha falt he has fair hair, ha falt And to describe her hair colour, it's ha falt ban ore, she has fair hair. And here are some of the colours we use for hair. Ban, fair. Ban, down, brown, down. And lia, grey, lia. And you'll find lots more examples connected to this topic on our website. Now, let's see what kind of people are being described in this conversation. Hi, Carla. Cheery, Carla. 
Haniel Carla Moven Mad Capiti. Hi Savoch. Kodisha ha Carla Coltoch. Hi Art. Agus hi cool. J and da a hid a fault. Ha fault ba nodde. A vel sulen godama eike? Ha, ha sulen godama eike. Kodish ha meg the ven coltoch a hamish. Uh, well, um, Hanyeli Beck. Hi, Art. I will felt down order. Hanyel felt down order. Um, Hanyel. Ha felt fat a ban order. Ha sulen got a make. Ha sulen donna ek me vramus. Ha felt does got order. Ha e bick agus ha e cool. Ha mahir tapi, ach ha muvahir kul. Ha falt down ore, ha falt lia ir mahir. We will shen. Chanil ach ha falt lia id. Ha falt lia id mahenu. A will shen. Ha ha mahenu shen. Ha mahenu big agus tapi. Ha sulun dona ike. Kerisha ha the henever koltoch. Hai bek agis tapi, ha falt lia ore, agis ha sulen uenye eike. Ha sulen uenye ek Felix, ha emoz agis bria agis tapi. Ko? Felix, kathakam. <laughs> Did you recognise some of the descriptions there? Katrina asked Andre. Kurish a ha Carla Koloch. What does Carla look like? Kurish a ha Carla Koloch. And his description of her Hai arsht agus cool. She's tall and slim. Hai arsht agus cool. Katriana then went on to ask Jane da a hair a fault. What colour is her hair? Jane da a hair a fault. And Andra replied, Ha falt ba nore. She has fair hair. Ha falt ba nore. We were also given a good description of Alice's girlfriend. Ha sul and thona ik mavramer. My girlfriend has brown eyes. Ha sul and thona ik mavramer. She then went on, Ha falt dorache ore. She has dark hair. Ha falt dorache ore. And she went on to describe her some more. Hai beek agus cool. She's short and slim. Hai beek agus cool. Let's listen to some of that conversation again. Kori shaha karna koltoch. Hai art agus hai cool. Je and da a hid a falt. Ha falt ba nore. A vel sulen gorama eike? Ha, ha sulen gorama eike. Kodish ha meg de ven koltoch a hemish. Uh, well, um, chanyeli beck. Hi, art. A vel falt down order. Chanyel falt down order. Um, chanyel. Ha falt fat a ba nore. Ha sulen got on eke. Ha sulen donna ek me vramus. Ha felt dos got order. Ha e bick agus ha e cool. Now to my favourite part of the programme when we get to meet another inspirational Gaelic learner. And I've been joined from the Isle of Lewis by Colin Scott Mackenzie, who'll tell us how he came to take an interest in the language. But before we start talking, Let's find out a bit more about him. Hello, this is Mr. Callan Scott McKinney. Hami and yours is Hami a furuch kolari moven Karistiana. Karistiana and I have been married for 54 years. Hoor zich mi a kjouze gekanik door de vaamidem. Jeukere ach staat mi. Although my mother spoke the language, I grew up in a time where English was the language of the classroom and wasn't until later in life that I started learning it. 
I was Tropical Fiscal in Stornoway and Loch Maddy for something like 30 years. And then I went north to Shetton and Orkney as a sheriff. I retired in 2002, and after that, I worked as a part-time sheriff. Hamidisha nam kiri onoroch, kavimi fein pag gashon nomposho, bimi ga yianu gashon an uru. Kalhmi an taisho an kulvik an an shaskatu, bishin furuch gaun ek jirig shaske. We try and spend as much time in Krulovik as we can. As you can see, we have many trees, three to four acres, which I have grown over the last 40 years. A tor kruven et a yalistje, alman kulje Krulovik akinja. I have a keen interest in nature, and we all have a responsibility to look after the planet for future generations. Ham your son Kamala tor. I guess her own dog sucker could be me filter, could your, I guess, commissal, a hula tunya hiction. Fall charged a halin, could speak Gaelic. Kimmera how? Very well, thank you. Lovely to see you. And can you tell us a wee bit about your learning journey? Well, it's been a long journey. When I was little, everybody spoke. Gaelic and everybody spoke English and uh, if you couldn't speak one or the other you were a bit of a, a linguistic freak I think <clears throat> and nobody was particularly interested in spending time with you to repeat things again and again and again. How do you find that attitudes to the language have changed over the years? Uh, difficult to say. There always were um, uh, particularly in Stornoway, uh, a bubble of people who were anti-Gaelic for no reason that I could ever figure out. Don't know why. But basically, people were uh, very proud of their heritage. Mm -hmm. I think until possibly the coming of, of this medium of television. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, uh, people's entertainment was mostly in English. I think that created a, a change in how people saw it. And you've said that conversational fluency is your aim. What's the biggest obstacle in achieving that? Well, my biggest obstacle is that I'm getting, I'm now of an age when I'm getting slightly hard of hearing. That, that, <laughs> that makes it difficult for me sometimes because I just don't hear the, mm -hmm. the, end, of the, the end of the word. Yes, and it's so hard because when you are learning a language, you want to repeat the sounds over and over again so they really yeah. stick. Yeah. And finally, Achalbein, do you have a favourite Gaelic word or phrase? I do have a, 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 a personal coat of arms mm -hmm. and my slogan for that is Buenia Duachas na, na Holland, which is translated in T.D. Macdonald's book of Gaelic phrases as uh, hereditary learning is better than book learning. Well, that is true, Achali, but we're all in a learning journey, aren't we? Oh, yes, yes. And there are pitfalls all, all along the way. Um, so far as I know, I don't say anything rude when I, <laughs> when I shouldn't, but uh, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you don't. Well, Kiet Mila Tanga Khali, thank you so much for coming to talk to us and I wish you well on your continued Gaelic learning journey. <laughs> Let's leave the studio now and head out and about in the company of our own intrepid explorer, Calvin McLean. Callum McLean, as he continues with his alternative take on some of Scotland's hidden gems. Normally, Callum's the picture of health, but I don't think that he's feeling too great at the moment. Oh. Oh. In Chelandu, the Black Isle, in Chelandu. That's where I am today, and I have to admit, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Oh. I've tried all the cures. Medicine, coup tea, a nice cup of tea. I even tried snav, swimming, snav. You know, that cold water swimming that seems to be all the rage these days. 
But then I was told of an old way to cure an illness. Now, all I'm going to need is a clout, a cloth or a clout, a clout, and a special topper, a well, a topper located in these woods. I'm at a topper clouty, a clouty well, topper clouty. Oh, that breakfast burrito, man. Oh. The Topper Chluti is a remnant of an ancient tradition, a place of pilgrimage. People would travel here with their own clout, or one belonging to a sick person, dip it in the topper, then hang it from a geek, a branch, geek. This tradition dates far back into pre-Christian times, although looking at some of the rags strung up here, it's a practice that's still going strong. Marie Morrison is one of the forestry rangers here and can tell me a bit more about it. So Marie, the clouty well, how does it work? Well, first of all, you need a clout. Good, I've got one here. Okay, great. What happens then? So then you take your clout and you dip it into the well itself and you think about any illness or ailment that you might have or need help with and then you tie it to a tree that's round about the well. And what does that do then? The thinking is that the healing waters from the well are going to help uh, deal with any ailments or illnesses that you might have. So if you've got something particular that you want healed, you can think about that at the time as you're tying it onto the tree and then you just leave it there and it works its magic. I've got to be honest, I'm feeling a wee bit rough today, but I've got my clout. What shall I do now? Take it to the well and dip it in the waters and leave it here to help deal with your illness. Right, well, time to give this a go. Now people have variations on this ritual, so to give myself the best chance at health, I've decided to do them all. First up, you circle the topper three times sunwise. That's jesal, or clockwise, jesal. Now some people also say a prayer whilst doing this. And then, sprinkle some water on the ground. And finally, dip my clout into the topper and rub it on the affected part of my body. Ah. Oh, and hang your clout on a gig. Oh, wow, I feel like a new man. Wow, the power of the topper clouty may well be real. But remember, it's not until your clout disintegrates on the gig that your illness is healed. And because of that, it's vital we only use natural fibres. Because if you hang some plastic based rag here, well, you may be stuck with your chinus, that's your illness, your chinus forever. And since I'm feeling better, I'm going to take this clout with me. You know what they say? You should take only photos and leave only footprints in the countryside. Ah, oh, this is a lovely clout. Thank you, Callum. We're all pleased that you're feeling better and even more so that you only leave footprints behind. With such a spring in your step, who knows what you'll be up to the next time we meet. Now, thanks to Callum's linguistic prowess, we know that a topper is a well. Quant is a cloth. And jishal is clockwise. Jishal. And if you want to see more of Callum's take on Gaelic, you can find lots more videos on our website. And also make sure you follow us on all of the usual social media platforms. Now, a Vilshev Jishal, are you ready to speak some more Gaelic? We all like to talk about things we're good at, especially when it comes to languages and hobbies. And a phrase which allows us to do that is ma'ith, good at, ma'ith. To say you're good at something, you say hami ma'ith, followed by whatever it is, hami ma'ith. So if you're good at cooking, it's Hami ma id kokerach. I'm good at cooking. Hami ma id kokerach. To say someone else is good at something, in the case of a male, hai ma id. He's good at. Hai ma id. 
and to use the same example, Haima it kokerach. He's good at cooking. Haima it kokerach. And a female, Haima it kokerach. She's good at cooking. Haima it kokerach. Hae and hai. We also like to talk about the languages we speak. If you want to know if someone has Gaelic, you could ask, A vil Gaelic akat? Do you have Gaelic? Do you speak Gaelic? A vil Gaelic akat? To ask if he has Gaelic, it's, A vil Gaelic ekje? A vil Gaelic ekje? And to ask if she has Gaelic, a vil Gaelic eichje. Does she speak Gaelic? A vil Gaelic eichje. You'll be familiar with the response to all of these questions using ha, yes, or chanil, no. Ha or chanil. We can use the same structure to ask about other languages. And here's the Gaelic for some of those languages. Frangish is French. Frangish. German is Geramalchish. Geramalchish. And English is Björwa. Björwa. And you'll find more examples on our website. Let's listen to this next conversation and see if we can recognise any of the languages mentioned. Hi, Elsie. Come on, Arshif. How are you? Thank you. Hi, Brian. Hi. How are you? Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, Kanok Birk. I will show you my cockerock. Hi, fear for his cockerock. I will see for my cockerock. How many cast glorious cockerock? I have shown you in a shower. I shall believe if you're Gaelic. I tell her if you leave against the Gaelic. Still, Hanna Falkland, Hobria. Will more than Gaelic Agav? Ha more than a Michel. Ha is a mar Gaelic. I mean a shower of Frangish. I will Frangish Agav. Big and Frankish Akam, a Hanyami Mahath Frankish. Ha Gerimotu Jakam, a will Gerimotu Jakam. Hanyas Fark of Gerimotu Jakam, a Hagalic Gilorakam. Shagalic a Charlem. Hagalic Akam, a Bjorakam, a guess a big and Frankish Akam. A Frankish Akam, sir, a Bjorakam, I guess, well, a big and Gallic Akam. Ha Gerimotu Jakam, a Bjorakam. I guess I'm big and garlic. I'm so good. I'm garlic. Good job, Raka. I should make a garlic. Did you recognise some of the phrases we heard there? Emma asked Elsie, "A vil shoni ma it kokerach? Is shoni good at cooking? A vil shoni ma it kokerach?" And Elsie replied. Hai fear va. He's really good. Hai fear va. We also heard Michel, Elsie, and Emma talking about the languages they speak. Elsie asked them, A vil more in Gaelic akiv? Do you have much Gaelic? A vil more in Gaelic akiv? Michel told her, Ha frangish akimse. I have French. Ha Frangish Akam, sir. Ha Bjurwa Akam. I have English. Ha Bjurwa Akam. And finally, he said, Ha Bikan Gaelic Akam. I have a little Gaelic. Ha Bikan Gaelic Akam. Let's listen to some of that conversation again. And remember, you can watch all of our conversations on our website. Supported by bilingual transcriptions. I will show you my cockerock. I fear for his cockerock. I will see for my cockerock. How many cast glorious cockerock? I have shown you in a shower. 
I should be leaving your garlic. And tell her if you leave it on to garlic. Still, I'm a fachlin for Bria. Will more than garlic agaf? Ha more than Michael. Ha is in my garlic. A Frankish agam, sir. A Bjorla agam. I guess, well, a big and garlic agam. A small number of adjectives in Gaelic change when used to compare things. Ma, good, goes to nashar, better. And dona, bad, goes to nasmissa, worse. Most just add an a uh sound at the end and slenderize their last syllable if it was broad. So, savoch, quiet, becomes nasavihe. Arsht, high, becomes nasarshje. But watch out for adjectives that start with f. After nus, the f disappears. Fuer, cold, becomes nasuade. And fata, long, becomes nasatje. And more language support is available on our website. Now, let's remind ourselves of some of what we've covered in this episode. Kurish ahai kawach. What does he look like? Kurish ahai kawach. Or if you're asking about a female, Kurish ahai kawach. What does she look like? Kurish ahai kawach. You respond to that question with hae or hae, he is or she is, followed by the description. Hae and hae. To describe the colour of someone's hair. Ha falt baanith. He has fair hair. Ha falt baanith. Or Ha falt banore. She has fair hair. Ha falt banore. To describe the colour of someone's eyes, it's ha sul lentone eichke. She has brown eyes. Ha sul lentone eichke. Or ha sul lentone eichke. He has brown eyes. Ha sul lentone eichke. And probably the most important phrase of all, a vil more and garlic akiv. Do you have much garlic? A vil more and garlic akiv. And if you want to be able to confidently say, ha garlic akum, I do have garlic, make sure you access all of our materials online. Download our podcasts from BBC Sounds and keep in touch with us on all of the usual social media platforms. There's plenty there to keep you busy until the next time we meet. Until next time, Martian Live. <laughs>